Hello, everyone. Let's see. Let me know if you can hear me okay. We're going to get started real soon. We hear you. Perfect. Hello, Kevin. Hello, Cart Boy. Margo. Daydreaming. Hello, hello. Wargram is kind of dead now. I don't think so. Conventions are happening all across the world. Lots of stuff happening. Maybe not as much on like YouTube and stuff, but hopefully some, maybe some more people want to join the Wargram YouTube space. Definitely not easy, but kind of cool. All right, let me drop links for other people. And we'll start, start get start going cart boy says your paper isn't perfect square I'm dying inside oh no it's always not super fun Ochi, I'm not late. No, you're not. Steve. Hey, Steve. How's it going? Great to see you. Thanks for watching. All right. Let me know. Can, can y'all hear like the background music? If you don't like the background music, let me know. I'm just trying to feel it out. You know, maybe it'll be a little relaxing, fill in the gaps of, you know, when I'm not talking or if it's just folding. But if y'all like really don't like it, definitely let me know and I'll turn it off. Hear it a bit, I think it's good. Music on here and there, mix it up. Is it like too quiet that it's like really weird? Add chat. Uh, where do you buy paper? I just got 500 sheets in the mail. Half are unevenly cut. Ooh. Um, if you go to the paper guide videos, I have links for that. I also, you can just go to my website. I have a whole blog on which papers I get and which papers I buy. And I have links for them and I write, wrote a blog about what I like about each one. So definitely go check that out. I think uh, some of those links, they might be sold out. So I have to update some, but that's a good place to start. Perfect mix. Sweet. Okay. Thank you. How, how's it going, Liam? Thanks everyone for watching. Nice and relaxing. Good. If boy streams, you know, it's going to be an amazing. Oh, Liam, you're so nice. Thanks, man. Let's see, well, I guess uh, I should go up. We want to Oh, if I can do audio ducking. Yeah, okay. I, I did set that up here, but that's a good idea. I can probably set that up. I can also post what you're listening to. Uh, well, what I'm listening to is just like stream safe, royalty free background music. So uh, <laughs> hopefully hopefully it's actually like royalty free, but it doesn't matter too, too much. So paper that you use pre-cut the squares or do you cut it yourself from a roll? Um, normally I cut it myself. Uh, again, I show how to cut those out in the ultimate paper guide, uh, video four. There's also a guide in video three and in video one. So there's three videos of different methods of cutting the squares. However, this specific one I bought from a friend and it was pre-cut. So generally this double tissue is more expensive than people want to spend on double tissue, right? I believe it was like $6. Um, per square, 
but it saves me a lot of time. It supports my friend. He's willing to do it. It's a nice quality. So six bucks is a totally fair price for my reasoning. You know, this is not for everyone. Uh, not everyone has six dollars to drop on paper. But if you if you do, you can save some time. Do something like this. Um, so yeah, it kind of depends. Um, always safe. <laughs> I feel the music is nice, but it's a, just a bit too quiet. A little too okay. Well, I'll I'll, I'll crank it up just like a, a smidge. I just don't want it to like overpower my voice, and then because I, I feel like I talk quietly a little bit, or at least on this microphone, it's a little bit quieter. Not sure. Uh, how did I learn so much about origami? That's a good question. Um, watched a lot of YouTube, so you know, there's Joe Nakashima, Tadashi Mori, uh, Kate Chan. Tim Rickman, all those channels back in the day that were making complex tutorials. Watched those, learned about other folders because I like Tadashi would get permission from different designers to make those tutorials. And then just, you know, Google searched a whole bunch of stuff, looked on Flickr, and then taught myself as much of it as I could. And now we're here. And then, yeah, convention. When I went to convention, that was like life changing in terms of origami knowledge and uh, opened my mind even more and my motivation to learn. Going to bed. Oh, that's early. Thanks for stopping by, Liam. I get some good rest. How fast can I speed run a crane? I don't really fold very fast because I don't really like to, but I'll probably do a crane in a minute. It's probably pretty slow. Um, yeah, I, I prefer folding slow and careful than folding fast. Uh, but that's kind of just me. All right, I'll keep answering questions, but let me explain real quick what's going on this stream. So this is the clap or partially collapsed sub zero that we were working on last stream. So last stream we designed it, but you can see the crease pattern right here. Uh, hold on, that's the wrong crease pattern. Oops. Uh, okay, well, this is a leak to a new design. Um, y'all want to? Should I show that to y'all? You want to see it? So that was the design I made this week. Um, this is the Sub Zero. Uh, the one. So I'm doing the Origami Darren Discord uh, Death Battle folding competition or design competition. So I'm working on my next design, and so it's a, a humanoid. Another humanoid with more color changes. So that was the other uh, crease pattern. And it's going to have a sword, color change sword. So I was uh, test folding quite a bit. This one is also a 32 grid, but I need to bump it up a little bit to get the sword a bit longer. Uh, but you can kind of see the concept a little bit. And actually, I really like the legs on that one. The color changing worked out really well. Um, the color change on this one, it kind of works. It's not the greatest. I think I overestimated what I could do from the bottom edge. But I think it'll work enough is the, is, is the thing, hopefully. Uh, it just might look a little bit strange. Um, I think, so Sub-Zero, the ideal color would have been black and blue. But this is also kind of just a test fold. To kind of show the process of design uh, it's not really meant for the full product but you can see i've already made some changes so i showed this last time but the color change was slightly different because the unit was up here but actually what ended up being better was to sh move it down a little bit i think i moved it down like is it one or two i think one one unit down like this. Oh, maybe it's two. So it's two units down. And I'll show what this is like on the crease pattern. Uh, but if you watch my crease pattern class, this is Elias stretching. So you're able to oftentimes just shift flaps like that really easily by doing Elias stretches. Especially when it's one unit. And then on the crease pattern. So we actually don't need these 22 and a half things. Um, and I shift down to, so it's like 
watched this. Oh, I was feedbacking myself. Hold on. There we go. Okay, I think we're good. Um, yeah, so it's like that. I, I basically just drop it. So it looks like this. And I'm going to change this to just a very skeletal crease pattern so I don't confuse anyone. I think I drew these lines to explain the mountain valley arrangements, but uh... now one thing we, oh, and then there was another issue, which I solved off stream. I solved the crease pattern on, or I fixed the crease pattern on stream. But I didn't fold it, but this is the folded, um, Correction, I guess the uh, uh, basically this area was like shifted over one, and it was really weird. I think, or it was, it was somehow it was misaligned, but we we fixed it here. Um, and then the last thing we didn't do basically was this section, which I didn't even draw the uh, flaps. It look like this. Oh man, what's going on? So this is what these flaps look like. And if you're wondering how I know how to draw these boxes, um, definitely check out a little bit of last stream. Cause so I think, I think I covered it, but maybe I'll do a quick overview. Let's see in chat. Uh, do you guys understand what's going on here? Or do you want me to explain it a little bit? Do I do 22 and a half designs? I do. Um, I've got a fair amount. I, I prefer box plating. It's, I think for the subjects I design, it works better than 22 and a half. Uh, the natural 22 and a half shapes are kind of lost when you start sync folding everything. So if you have something like a sword or very thin, long flaps uh, it's kind of pointless to do 22.5 unless i need a teachable folding sequence which then it requires like more shaping so again it's like a there's a lot of drawbacks but it also could be because i'm not the best at 22 and a half yet um how's it going mark great seeing you first convention experience was phenomenal everyone's really kind oh i'm so glad and yeah, uh, I, that was really great meeting you. I think that's Angel. Oh, that's good stuff. Have a fantastic day. When did you stream to Sub Zero? Uh, last Thursday, so a little, a, a week and a day ago. I was going to need to go to the 2023 convention, but I had to. Ah, oh, I see. That's unfortunate you missed it, but maybe you can come to the next one. Or at some point, I'll come to Japan <laughs> and attend one of those. Uh, what size paper do you recommend for the Dragonaut Rider? Uh, you definitely want to use like 70 or 80 centimeter paper. Uh, like my fold, I think is still really small and it was 70 something centimeters. I don't understand how to recrease patterns. No worries. That's I have a whole class for that. So check that series out and it'll get you started. You won't be able to solve really crazy crease patterns. Oh, thanks, Mark. What's your design process when you're designing a subject? A car, for example, that does not have flat river allocation. Uh, so that one, actually, that's a really good question. Uh, so let me answer the previous question. Let me show the Dragonaut Rider just to flex the design a little bit, because that's fun. So I know it's kind of hard to get good size comparisons from like watching something on a screen. Um, 
But this is a six inch or 15 centimeter Kami, right? And the finished Dragon Knot Rider uh, kind of fits in this. And this is folded from, I believe a 70 centimeter sheet, if not bigger. Um, and you can, you can kind of see that a wing got damaged and travel a little bit, but, um, Oh, actually, the wings got very damaged <laughs> in travel. That's okay. I think uh, it was a little bent in the box they were in. Uh, it's supposed to be like this. But, uh, like, you can see that the night part is really small. Like, really, really small. So, if you want to be able to shape it well, you should use at least this size paper. And it's still going to be pretty small to get good enough details to make it look like the night. Like, I feel like I could have done a better job even. Like, the hands got really hard. Um, but this was, like, just enough, you know? But, yeah. So, that's the first question. Second question was... From Hans. What's my design process when I'm designing something that's, like, a car? So... Done a car. And actually, I have a whole 12 minute video about how I designed this one as well. So you should check that out. I think it'll be more in depth than my answer here. But a lot of it was just uh, um, like testing at least the color changes and then certain structure. So, like each wheel, I test folded the the front was its own section that I test folded and I just kept in mind like how I needed to connect each part to each other. So at least like um, for something 3D, it's a little bit more difficult because you have to leave room for the paper to bend and fold in. Um, but again, those things you can kind of test as well. And then once I had that, then I started to compile it into the crease pattern. Um, uh, but yeah, so something without Flaps, you know, you gotta do some test folding. You can still use your knowledge of like transitions and whatnot to be able to do stuff like this. So for example, uh, what we have in our crease pattern over here, we have all these flaps. So I needed some on the outside, but then we can use the remaining ones in the middle. Or if I take something, for example, like the, uh, um, the Dragon Knot Rider, right? Like understanding how to take a flat from one area where it could lead to the next, but still f like reuse like this whole area for something purposeful and just how pleats work and whatnot is really useful because if you look at the BMW one, basically, uh, and it might be too small. So let me, uh, right. When you take a look at this, you can see all these little transitions, which is a really easy to fold. You just, moving layers back and forth between this whole folded up section. Um, and like that uh, spacing and the transitions is how I was able to get um, the uh, wind, like the front windows and the back window windshield and getting the pleats in the right area. So, you know, something like that, you just need that, that knowledge or practice of, you know, oh, I know I can flip a plate this way if there's a certain amount of layers through it, or I can flip it the other way. Um, and that's a little bit more abstract, but yeah, that's kind of how you would go for there. Um, if you have a mixed thing, so something with like mixed flaps and then like a very three-dimensional thing. So this is the housing crisis design. It's my I think it's this is my most recent design besides the stuff I've been working on on stream but this one's weird right because you have uh flaps and then you got a big 3d thing so what do you do uh, and sometimes the answer is you just uh you just free fold it so um, I don't have my test fold anymore but I just test folded the house on a sheet of paper and then had the idea that as long as there's enough paper, I can make this house. 
So the uh, crease pattern looks like this. <laughs> right? So here's like the person and then just enough paper. Like, a, like basically the whole top half or a little bit more than the top half. It's kind of like an L shape or a weird, not an L shape, like a weird, uh, yeah, weird geometric shape. Um, but that's, I mean, I was still able to plan it out. Like you can see, I planned it out with the tree method too. Like you have the person and then you just have enough paper sticking out the back. Um, and then you, you get something like this. So yeah, it's it's a little bit more tricky when it's not like able to be drawn as a tree for sure. But uh, test building. I was about to fold it with 42. Yeah, definitely do not try it with 42 centimeters. The Unite will be microscopic. Uh, any good ways to simulate origami right now? Simulator didn't let me fold. I only took diagrams. Uh, there's origami simulator that does crease patterns if you export it to an SVG. Um, that's that's uh, that's all I really know. How long did it take to fold the dragon, not rider? So I had to do that quickly. I think I could have spent a lot more time on it if I had the time. Uh, I did that within. Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> how, how long did I, that take? Uh, maybe like 13 hours, something like that. Like it didn't take too long actually. And I designed it in two days. Um, uh, two days of like three hours. So three hours the first day and like maybe a little bit less the second day and then just starting to fold it the second day. Thanks, Mark. You're dropping all the good links. It's good stuff. <laughs> what age did I begin folding origami at a super complex level? So as I answer these questions, I'm going to start folding in the uh, um, crease pattern that we don't have yet. So I think uh, I could keep answering you guys are asking some very good questions. So I, I'm down to share more. Um, I have to re pre crease this though. So let me just uh, double check really quick. I have one going and then I can chat while I uh, do the rest. So four, two, four. I think it starts here. Goes up. Two. That look right. That does not look right. Oh, I know why it's not right. Okay, I already have this three. I forgot to go three up and then four out. Four. Okay, I think part of this is already pre creased. So. Okay, we're just gonna send it as I answer questions. And if I mess up, I mess up. <laughs> uh, it should be okay. Uh, let me just do, so one thing I like to do with these uh, collapses is when I know there's like a big flap going through the middle like this, I can actually just fold along it. So I can just do something like like this. And then I basically treat a lot of stretches popping out from there. I learned that from a paper forger. So basically for, instead of uh, like parachuting, you can just pull this out and then start collapsing and then pull out a little bit more and start collapsing. And then it doesn't mess up the whole other side. You just do work on one side at a time. What age did I start doing comp super complex? Um, So if you go to my very first YouTube video on this channel, that is like literally the first 
in quotes, super complex origami. It's not even that complex. I don't think it's super complex, but that was my first fold of Tadashi Mori's uh, Darkness Dragon. And actually, I filmed the video originally because I was like, if I'm able to make this and it works, then I have this awesome like footage of me doing something really cool. Uh, and then it turned into a YouTube video after I edited it. And that started this whole channel, basically. Um, so that was, when was that? You want me to look back? My first video was, uh, maybe, maybe someone can do that for me while I'm folding. Um, go back to my channel and look for that, or you can probably just search it, uh, origami by boys, Tadashi Mori, darkness dragon. Um, and since then, um, although after I folded that, I like went really crazy in terms of trying to learn as much as I could. Um, so I think my skill level accelerated very quickly over the next year and then even more the year after, uh, cause then that's when I wanted to start learning crease patterns. It took me about six months to learn uh, to be able to fold like more complex insects. But within that time I had to also learn how to make stuff like double tissue. So that all happened around the same time. Am I a full-time origami designer? I'm not. I wish I was, but not, not yet. It's just a, just a side job for now. Or a, a side hustle, as they say. Yo, what's up, Shang Nara? And if I missed someone's question, feel free to chat it again. Like, um, obviously don't, don't spam it, but I, I know I missed quite a few. Um, Potentially, I'll try to get to it. Uh, full time. This is folding Saturday for you. Ah, folding Saturday. Nice. Yeah, I think this day works because it's like the weekend for some, or just like Friday night for uh, people in America. You have really good vibes. I look forward to saying hi to another stream when I have more time. I will check you out your other video. Oh, sweet. Thanks, Margo. Yes, definitely check out my other videos. Um, uh, I I have quite. A good amount for people wanting to get into more complex stuff that I've just I've just been building on over the past few years so I hope you enjoy those I think they're pretty 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 they're definitely they're all videos that basically I wish I had <laughs> when I was learning um, and I think that makes for some some solid videos okay so we have big flaps in the back and now we have some more but these ones are middle so again i don't like the parachute if i, if I can avoid it so i'm just gonna open this and stretch um, now these i did not pre-crease so <laughs> just kidding we have to open up a little bit more uh, if they had been pre-creased already then i would be able to just go for it but um why did i do it like this uh, i think it's because i want to invert the flap that way. Okay. I'm also not like super certain what I was going to use these middle flaps for, but uh, we'll see. That's part of the fun. We don't have a solid plan for them, but we can use them for something. Uh, Mark Christopher, hello. Hello, hello. Thanks for joining the stream. 12K for a first video. Um, it didn't have that originally. <laughs> that happened much later. Uh, so after my channel started to grow, I think after I hit my first thousand subscribers, then that video caught more traction, I believe. I think when it, you know, when I first posted it, like maybe a hundred views, maybe Few hundred views. Uh, not, not a lot for sure. This is very, very little. All right, because there's a gap, this makes the collapse a little bit harder in the middle. But uh, not too crazy. It's just a little bit weird to. 
get it back down together. Actually, it might be easier if I fold this flap up. And then it's out of the way. <laughs> I've never seen this video before. Very young boys folding Darkest Dragon. True. Uh, I believe in that video as well, uh, between the start and the finish, I had dislocated my, my finger. So you might see me wearing a, uh, a finger brace for after it was stitched back up. But you can see on my hand, right, the scar of where the bone actually popped through. So it, like it was a pretty serious dislocation. Um, but I, I kept folding through it and I had, I had, had to make the video, you know, I couldn't do too many like physical activities with that injury, but with origami, you know, it's, I, I, I had totally could. So that was kind of nice. Um, I can't remember if it was that video or if it was the, uh, giant Western dragon where I have the brace on. So if, if you watch it and you see it, then that's what that was, but it might, might be a different video. Okay, doing this flap in this manner was definitely a mistake. It is very annoying to collapse like this. So basically to get this to really fold flat, I have to fold it into the other flap first. And then this should line up. But it's very annoying. Okay. Sun what? Quietus. Domo arigato. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. I do like to fold cute origami. Anaj, I'm here by accident, but it's nice and soothing. Hey, thanks. Thanks for tuning into the stream. Um, yeah, we're folding some origami right now. So this mess right now will turn into Sub-Zero from Mortal Kombat. Um, I'm just finishing up the actual folding before we start shaping it into uh, the kind of <laughs> Sub-Zero, or at least that's, that's the goal. Uh, it may or may not turn into it. This is kind of like a test fold. Sometimes that happens. Video idea. Redesign the fish, but this time with scales and a realistic eye. That would be very interesting. So like the same kind of color change, but just like scales and an eye. <laughs> that, that would be interesting for sure. Um, you know, I've actually tried to redesign the fish with the scales before. And at that point, I didn't know too much about uh, designing, so it was it was a big failure, and I was uh, I like couldn't figure it out. It's, it's actually really funny. Um, but I guess what was cool about doing that is I actually that's when I realized that hey, this fish itself it's not very efficient, but it's actually not a bad design. Like the color change is kind of cool, and how I did it. Um, even though I really knew nothing when I first designed it, I just happened to blintz it enough and fold the fin through a little gap and there you go. Not bad. Have I played the paper 
Mario Oregon. You know, I haven't. I've wanted to get that game. So I have a Switch, but I haven't played it. I kind of just don't, haven't had the time, unfortunately, to try. Um, but it looks really cool. And I know there are some like origami artists, I think in Japan, that helped do some of the marketing for it. Made a little kit for the, uh, for the game. Ironically, as an origami folder, I've never had a paper cut in my entire life. Oh, that is very lucky. I have definitely had paper cuts. Um, if you've ever, like those, the Arches watercolor paper, the really thick paper that people like to use for wet folding, I got a paper cut from that. And my goodness, that hurt. <laughs> that one actually hurt quite a bit. But uh, printer paper does a fair amount of damage too, if you're not careful. But it could just be skill issue as well. <laughs> How old was I eight years ago? Oh, is that when I started? Eight years? Wow. Um, what was that? I was still in high school. So I think I was 17. No, 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 no. I was younger. No, that's right. 17. I'm 25 now. Math. <laughs> I like how I went the, uh, how old do I remember myself as first instead of just doing 25 minus 8. <laughs> it should have been probably faster I think I needed to collapse this side first and then the other side that way I can lay down in the pocket Yeah, by making this uh, middle flap intended to be inverted, collapsing it not inverted actually makes it a little bit more challenging than it really needed to be. So that took what, like 10 minutes instead of like the two it would have otherwise needed. So we have our collapse. Looks something like this. Now we have this whole big flap right here, but this I'm actually going to invert. So it's going to come out the other side. Am I going to end stream once I'm done or keep folding? Well, I don't think I'm actually going to finish this out. We're just going to kind of start folding a little bit to see like how it'd work. Um, Cause this is still part of the design phase, like test folding, see what works, see what might not work, what might need to change. Um, and then if I do finish that, then I was thinking of designing a skier. So the other topic that we were going to try was to do a skier and I would do a very, very simple skier. Um, I've already kind of thought of the structure in my head a little bit um, and then try to try to do that. The things that making it complex would take too much time. Um, uh, and then I'd be able to answer like questions a lot more easily. But like from here, we can start playing around a little bit with some of the color changes, see if we can get all of them, see which ones we can't get. And then uh, uh, that'll be at least how, kind of how much we fold of this. Maybe we'll go more if like I start to really think it'll be good. 
But I don't think we're going to be like fully shaping out everything today because that would take way too long. Um, I say that now, but who knows? So one color change we need is his pants are like, or he's basically got blue shin guards up to the knee and then he's got black pants underneath. Uh, now I know this is white, so it kind of looks like skin, which is not the <laughs> intended goal. Uh, but if it was black, then it would look more like pants, I think. Uh, but it's, it's kind of like this. And then he also has part of his uh, robe that comes down in the middle. And so this is one area where I wasn't exactly sure which of these flaps here could turn into that. But I think originally I was thinking this one could. Although it's not like super in the middle, but we could probably shape it to be. So we have like a, or we have an extra flap right here. So let's put this up. Is there a version of Paper Mario that can be played on? There's the original Paper Mario. Uh, it's not like an origami kind of one, but I've played that one before. Uh, you can't wait for me to grow a beard and become an origami Dumbledore. Start an origami academy. I might start an origami academy online. That would be the most reasonable way, I think, to do it. <laughs> but, uh, that'd be funny. I don't think I can grow a beard, though. That sounds more impossible, honestly. How's it going, Robert? And thanks for joining. And so Robert is one of the OBV members who actually submitted this topic for the stream, topic idea. So shout out to Robert. Also a really, really awesome and cracked folder. Doing some really complex designs, like a Shuki Kato, bunch of Shuki stuff, Zonoid Dragon, all that fun stuff. All right, so now what am I doing right here? So I'm actually have a reference photo of Sub-Zero that I'm looking at my second screen with, and I need to thin this flap out. So like, how do I do that? <laughs> you know, you could just valley fold it behind, but because it's attached to other flaps, it might turn out a little bit messy. So I'm going with my old favorite uh, double spread squash type thing, because uh, that kind of thins it out a little bit and it adds just a little bit of an interesting texture to one side. Uh, but the other thing I can do is now I can mount and fold this down. And it's like pretty squared off and cleaner. I won't say that this is clean, but it, it kind of works, I think. So I'm going to do that on the other side. So like this is the part of folding a model that this is, it's like a mix between free folding and shaping where I'm trying to shape with real structures. And then some of these things, like, obviously I didn't pre-plan this in the crease pattern, but it is still like sequences that I've remembered from doing before in other designs where I know it's possible to do this. And then later on, because these are structural, I could add them to the crease pattern um, later. So this specific one is like kind of annoying to add to a crease pattern, <laughs> but, um, and this might be one that actually makes the crease pattern look a lot harder than it is in reality. Um, so it would, might not be something I actually add because like resolving it. So as you see, we did the spread squash here, but if I want to fold this behind, now I actually need to resolve it on this side as well, which is still easy because it's just another squash, but translating it to the crease pattern makes it look, it would, it would look pretty, pretty hard when in reality it's, it's not, um, a lot of times when this is added to the crease pattern, people who want to fold this will try to collapse everything at once. So they'll try to collapse the crease pattern with this at once, instead of doing it one at a time, like the main structure first, and then this weird part. Uh, and that makes things like really, really difficult sometimes. 
Uh, and, and that is something that it's harder to detect, like whether you're supposed to do that or not. Uh, so generally, yeah. Now, one thing I do notice is actually this area of his, it's, this is like his hip area. This is supposed to not be color changed. Um, so let me see. I think we can fix that by letting the color change continue a little bit higher. Like that. And then I believe I can tuck this in without anything bad happening. <laughs> and by bad happening, basically I don't want to trap any flaps. I don't have to. There we go, tuck it into the pocket. And so something like this, and it, this is something that I probably would add to the crease pattern. So the color change, because like no one's gonna be able to actually, well, hmm. I think if I were to add it to the crease pattern, I would add it not tucked into the pocket. Because uh, drawing a crease pattern to have it like this is not so bad. This is not so bad. Uh, let me show what that would kind of look like. Um, so if I were to fill this out, it would be, I'm only going to do it on this side. Crease pattern would look something like this. Right, so this would be like um, no color change yet. And then to do the color change, right, we're opening up. So on the edge, there's no longer that mountain fold. Uh, but now we need to resolve this. So I think the way we did it was something like, maybe not this, uh, what? Uh, hold on. I need to fact check myself. Okay, it's like this. Uh, is that right? And then... Let's go to the end. Oops. Wait, what? Well, okay, so it's not like easy, but uh um I don't think that's right, but Maybe, maybe this is right, but this is how you would get that color change. And then it would also have to resolve out here. Um, so it's like the same thing backwards, I think. You kind of, you kind of get the point a little bit. Maybe. I don't, I don't know if that helped that at all or not, but, uh, that's kind of what it would be like. Something like that. I don't know. But yeah, so this is kind of okay because this makes sense. But adding the spread squash, which would be like this. And then there's like some half units that aren't really true shifters. 
Um, it, it gets like way too hyper confusing. Uh, but in reality, you don't need any of that. You just need the, <laughs> is all you need, right? And generally with some of my crease patterns, I'll do mountain valley at least. Uh, and most people have been able to figure it out. So sorry, that was a weird tangent. Maybe that was like a little bit too long than I should have gone on for, but hopefully, hopefully that helped a little bit. Which famous origami folders have I met before? Uh, I want to say like almost all of them. <laughs> Um, I've met, I've met almost all of them. I've met probably every American one that you could think of. Um, I've met Satoshi Kamiya. You can see that in the convention vlog 2019. I've met Fearless Flourish. I've met, uh, Paul Jackson. I've met Makoto Yamaguchi. Um, Bodo, Elon, uh, who else? There's quite a lot. There's a lot. I've met quite a lot of people, which is really cool. That's kind of the benefit of, um, going to origami conventions and then also helping with the video content and stuff for those origami conventions. Okay, so we have a weird thing here. I want to continue that color change like I did on this side, but we're not able to over here because of that thing. So I wonder if we can get like a slight compromise. I don't think so. We can maybe do this. push it a little bit higher it's not going to be quite the same so like like this would be something in the test fold that we discover and realize oh we need some more space uh, maybe get rid of one or two of these flaps that we can't really have uh, that way we can make it more uniform like technically it fits if we're talking tree theory but for actual shaping it's not as practical and then we actually lose that shape here which now to get it back we have to do more of a a mushed fold. Not entirely mushed, actually. I think we can salvage part of it, or most of it, by folding this down and doing the squash, very small squash, like in between all these layers. It's technically the same squash, it's just like way harder to access. Uh, but that's like unideal. You don't really want to have to mush shaping too much for a color change like that. But you can see how there's already that weird discrepancy from one side to the other. But that's kind of okay. Uh, we do, however, have now space for a belt. So this flap can be, be the belt maybe. Um, let's see. I kind of don't want to use this as the belt. I think the easiest thing we could do is just, uh, right, very simply just Mountain Valley a couple of bit, get some texture. Uh, ideally, this would run across the whole thing, but we can make it seem like it does. Just by adding some texture. Uh, but this would probably be something to think about later on is the fact that this doesn't run all the way through. So generally we don't want to leave it like that. We want to try to make it like the other side. So what could I do? I could actually uh, probably hide some of this. This is like more shaping, but there you go. At least now it's symmetrical.
we'll just say like that's for the belt right uh and then now here's another thing that i didn't quite think about originally i wanted this area to go up to the top for the robe but you can see that didn't happen um we do however have some flaps hiding out over here which maybe might turn into those because actually our torso the way we planned it is it's going to bend in like this And so that gives us some space to use these side flaps um, in some way. Do you have any tips for folding your dragon pleat armor assassin? Let me grab that really quick. That's a good, good question. The biggest tip I have is use the right paper <laughs> for starters. doesn't have to be this paper. It can be double tissue. It doesn't have to be this big either. It can be smaller. This one's actually a little bit more forgiving. Um, but make it large enough so that you can add more detail. The larger the paper, the more details you're going to get. I think uh, you don't want to use too large paper. So don't, don't use anything like a meter or anything. I think this is the most ideal paper size. Uh, but then from there, uh, if you haven't watched my crease pattern class yet, you should watch that before you start the tutorial. But I think the tutorial does a pretty good job at explaining just about everything about this model, including a lot about the shaping for the face. I talk about studying things to get yourself better. I even show how me shaping from my imagination versus looking at references and learning a little bit about face anatomy greatly improve the shaping just like just like that um so i think that's my my tips uh go slow don't don't speed run it or anything uh take a lot of time shaping don't be afraid to shape undo shape again because uh, i even did that for this one while making the tutorial you know it's just part of the process take it slow have fun with it and find a really fun pose you want to do. Uh, maybe if I were to just give like, what's my most recommended tip is uh, don't pose it standing still, right? Do something else, do something fun. It, copy my pose, you know, do something that's at least different than just standing, standing still, make it fun. Great question. It's going to hang out with us over here. What are my thoughts on Kirigami? Uh, not for me, you know, it's its own thing. I think if you're a Kirigamist, you can make some really cool stuff. Uh, cool stuff that might not be possible in origami or normal for it, but uh, it's not origami. You know, everyone's got their own thing going. That's all chill. They do their thing, we do our thing. We don't call our things Kirigami when it's not. And if they don't call their things origami when it's not, then I think everyone's happy. <laughs> How many years have I been doing origami? Uh, now I know because that's been asked. Or I guess seriously, I've been doing it like eight years um, in terms of my entire life. Uh, less than that or more than that. Sorry. Uh, so I was folding like airplanes and stuff before all this. Okay, so next thing to do on this model is to invert this flap. And this is going to be kind of cursed because uh, I realized that there's not the great greatest amount of uh, space to do this. But essentially, you can. The way I thought about this is I can push this flap out. All the creases actually kind of stay the same, except for this one it becomes inverted. But I'm not actually like reverse folding everything through the middle. It's just going to uh, go all the way through and then I have to reconstruct like everything back. 
and then the way it collapses is it's kind of going to be sandwiched this way and then there's going to be a really strange looking uh area where some layers are folding over themselves so that's going to be like right here And then in theory, there should be some like reverse foldy transitions. Try to fold it nice, but I think I can just kind of push it down and it'll be good enough. So I'm thinking I might need to invert the other flaps with it, like uh, these ones kind of makes sense too but at the same time I don't really want to but one thing that this does is it helps us align actually our axes so it used to be like this right but now we can do more of it like this which actually works for us um, maybe we don't need to invert the other flaps. So the reason this works for us is um, we have a lot more room or just like slightly more room and flexibility to use the middle flaps f forward and then the arms actually get longer because we don't have to hinge them outside. And if you're wondering about that, I actually talked a lot about that on the last stream. So go check that out. But obviously we don't want to do a stick figure. Our torso needs to have some volume. And that's what that's what this last flap here is for, which actually comes from the bottom, but helps to cover the torso, right? That's what this one's for. Um, and for now, I'm going to clip everything into place. And the one caveat is we do have this one color changed flap in the back, which I have no idea what to use for. But I don't know, maybe in theory later we can like close the back with a color change flap or something. Really no idea, but for now I'm just going to leave it kind of sticking out so it's out of our way. Uh, and we'll, tr we'll try to find a something <laughs> to use that for later. Okay, then I also have this flap, uh, which I also have on this side, but it went somewhere. I think it's trapped here it is so let's free that so there we go now we have all our flaps and again this can be used for more clothing detail is it was kind of extra so uh, uh this grid actually probably is too big for the details that we wanted uh which were not that many just a little bit of color change you can see how It's going to be something like this. So maybe these can, I don't know, make more details on the belt. This can be part of the vest now or part of the shoulders pulling upwards into the neck, wrapping around. And then our head is right here. And we actually have uh, some flaps. for the face or for the mask basically and then on this side what was this this arm is like way too long actually uh, it's like it's like way way too long um, so we could probably yeah I think I think in general this design has like uh, there's a lot of mistakes, so uh, a lot of things need to be fixed. I could probably add, so we designed it so he'd be holding like his ice ball, 
I think we can actually do that on both arms. And that's by making the arms a lot shorter. And then adding the the the, the ball to I I can't believe I overthought this. I can already tell from my crease pattern how wrong it is. Like two, four, five length arm with the six length hand. It's like way too long. It should be four, four, four unit arm with a one unit hand. Uh, so let's actually correct the crease pattern. And then we can go from there. So let's switch over to this. Uh, where do I start from? Quite into it. I have a book that I've... Yeah, so you know, if you folded everything in your origami book, maybe you can start with some YouTube tutorials. Uh, I highly recommend Joe Nakashima. He's got a good range of beginner, intermediate, and like low complex tutorials. And once you can follow those with being able to read the, you know, whatever origami book you have, you can progress from there. Uh, and then start learning to make double tissue. So you can follow my paper guide. And once you do those things, like you don't need to learn how to read crease patterns yet. Um, you should work on just honing your skills so you can make things that look good with good, with better paper, more advanced paper. And then with that, it'll take you into more advanced origami. Should be good. Legos here. Hello, hello. Don't worry, you're not too late. Uh, I'm gonna answer some questions really quick. Oh yeah, okay, so how do you start with advanced work? Yeah, I would say uh, fold tutorials, make advanced paper, and then keep folding those tutorials until you can shape them really, really well. I attribute a lot of my success, if you were to call it in origami, or skill level in origami, um, due to the fact that I took a lot of time trying to just make the things I could already fold a lot better. You know, getting it as close as I could to as good as the designer, which it was still nowhere close to as good as the designer, but just learning shaping as much as I could, even with bad paper, uh, and then using good paper and then doing even better shaping. Um, and that's carried me so that once I could design, I could design it and shape it, you know, I think actually this uh, box pleating stuff that I'm showing here, it's not, it's easier to learn than folding something good. I think folding something or folding something well, making it look good is a lot harder than learning to design. Cause you could learn the design theory and it's like learning math, but uh, making something look good, it's like art. You know, it's, it's more subjective. There's a lot more small things to learn. Uh, material requirements are one big thing. So there's actually plenty of people who can probably design box plate stuff like this, but they wouldn't be able to fold it into something recognizable because they don't know how to shape it or don't have the paper for it. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, hope that answered that question. I do have a, uh, a mark, uh, if you can link the skill issue quiz, um, that kind of helps navigate some of the areas of origami you need to work on that you might not have thought about before. Um, and that can help you out. So Mark, if you could find, I think it's obb.design slash skill issue or skill underscore issue might be the link. Um, but yeah, at the same time, when you're doing that, you want to have fun. So, uh, Ro Ro Ronak has a good point. He says, fold what you like. So if you fold in what you like and it's fun, you'll go far. If you fold something just because it's complex, but you don't like it, then you're probably not going to get very far because you don't like it and you're not having fun. Um, so if for some people like Ronak, Ryujin was the start, that's shouldn't be what it is for most people, I think. But for some people it is, and that's okay. But find what you like first and then go from there. So you can see for me, it was Tadashi Mori's Darkness Dragon. That was my entry level uh, thing into complex origami. Um, I wouldn't say, I think walking the rain is not that great. If people don't know how to shape, they're just gonna make it bad looking walking in the rain. 
Um, so unless you think it's really fun and you can already decrease patterns, maybe try that. But I think making a human look good is even harder than doing something like making an insect look good or making a, a mammal look good. Um, so maybe, maybe go even simpler. What was my first origami models? Uh, planes, boats, boxes. Most, mostly that until John Singer's Zingman Dragon. That's a fun one. And I think the diagrams are still available for free if you look up John Zinger Dragon. Um, that was my first dragon, my first like intermediate origami fold I did. I made some Chinese vases, which are similar to this. I made a pig because I found it interesting. Nice. Quite good at making doves. I see the figure so Yeah. Thanks for your stream. Love. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. I'm glad to be able to chat a little bit, give some advice on what to try, what not to try. And yeah, as, as long as you're having fun though, like that's the most important part. You can be folding less complex stuff and just take it a little bit slower. And as long as you're having fun, you're doing it right. So, um, that's, uh, the overall tip. Mark, have I planned how to do color change chest abs? So I think the chest, uh, color change is not going to work. <laughs> Um, it, I think it could with this same design, but okay. I have an idea. We'll, we'll give it a shot, but I think, I think it's a bad idea <laughs> is, is the, is the answer. Um, good question, Mark. Lego. I spent hours on origami and it went to the trash. Yeah. See, you don't want it. That's the thing. And it's not like I want to gatekeep people for gatekeep people from folding stuff or from folding bad things or judging them because it's bad but it's like more so i'm advising it so that you save your own time because i wasted my time like i i know what it's like to fold some trash stuff too um so like don't waste your time rushing into things my my first reusion was a fail because thankfully what i didn't get too far into it but i i i i found out slightly the hard way that i was not ready for it and instead of continuing and spending 80 hours to make a trash reusion, I was like, I'll just fold other fun stuff, get a lot better. And then by the time I fold reusion again, I'll make sure it's easy for myself. And then, uh, if you've seen my reusion, I intentionally made it harder for myself just to prove to myself that I understood it enough that it would be easy still. And it was, it was still very easy, even with, uh, very unideal materials and size of paper uh, and in that way it made it fun for me to do and kind of like uh proof to my rationale that it was good to wait until i was a lot better um, thanks mark for the link arush says i'm a perfectionist so if i make it i want to good yeah so you know don't don't i think the biggest mistake people make when starting advanced origami is they go to something way too hard. So, um, you know, don't rush into some of the stuff that's way too hard. Um, and honestly, a good skill is to identify, you know, if you start to understand what model is too hard at the moment and what models aren't, then you can tell yourself, okay, I'm starting to understand origami in general better. Um, and then eventually, again, those things that are too hard for you now, the goal is to fold enough so that they're easy later, and then you can fold them. And I think that's a much more sustainable way to learn origami. I made a spider with a $2 bill. Oh, that's cool. That's a rare, rare dollar bill spider for sure. Hans Woman says, my favorite all-time model to fold is June Mikawa's Devil. That is a classic. That structure itself is very classic for kind of humanoid styled things of origin june meikawa very cool uh, i've only met him online i've not met him in person very cool designs all right let's uh let's fix these arms so i think this structure actually works um with the fingers we just need to move them into the right spot so let me copy this and we want or maybe it's easier to start here so we want four unit arms like this ah. okay 
And we also want this to be on the corner or on the edge, just because that's easier. And it's okay it's not in the corner because now we have more paper for the ball. Uh, but the length and how I'm deciding this, so this is one, right? This area is two and a three, four. So length of four. And I think, I think this is long enough because if we check our, um, our fold right now, the arms are like six units long. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Right. And then if I put it sh straight down, it like is way past the, the knee. Also, this is going to shorten the torso is going to shorten a lot here so if we only had four units that'd be like if our arm was this long and that actually looks kind of correct All right <laughs> uh maybe it could be five um but i think five is still like a little bit too long i'd be like this yeah five is like a little bit too long so i think four is optimal So that's four and then we have like extra space here, which I don't really know what to use it for. So we can just put like a random flap here for now and decide what to use or what to do with it later. Um, and then same thing here, actually, I think we can, um, this edge line's bothering me. So, okay. Like this, I think we can just kind of copy this over and it actually fits perfectly like right there so that, <laughs> that works out too um, again it's kind of weird that you have these flaps I think ideally Now we can make this whole thing symmetrical, but I don't want to recollapse the head. So like this would be better. This would be better, um, but I don't want to recollapse the head. So we're not going to, <laughs> and we're just going to leave one weirdly long flap and one short flap that might not do much for us except color change. Um, and that's that's just that's how that's how it be sometimes uh but at least we fixed the crease pattern there and we can make the changes really easily on this side uh, so in this case i'm gonna open this up we're gonna start with this one because it's a little bit easier to see so we got one two three this is where this goes down and back up five and now this area is where it shortens into four and so this I actually like don't even have to pre-crease because again you can kind of just treat these as Elias stretches And they're just one unit flaps, so it's easy enough to manage. If you're slightly off, it doesn't matter too much. It matters a little bit, but. And then this is going to be for the ice ball. And the one thing I'm not like super certain on is like if the ice ball is actually in the correct spot, <laughs> but. We're gonna hope that it is. But I think we have enough space now. It's long enough that it'll be like long enough, right? 
Damn, new Twitch stream? Not right now. This is like an official live stream, or Grammy live stream. So we're on YouTube. Uh, the non-official ones will be on Twitch, which I'll probably do for uh, working on this one. Sub Zero, true. Yes, Sub Zero. Pretty fun. Right now, it looks like a Hatsune Miku. Uh, oh, how's it going, K? Great to see you. Thanks for watching the stream. OBB Miku when? Ooh, that's a good question. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll have to participate for Hatsune Miku's birthday next time that comes around. <laughs> I do have some twin tail models, right? So I have some experience. Probably, probably make one. Do you have a Zoro or Luffy? No, not yet. Uh, I've been asked to make some One Piece origami models, but the rule for myself is I need to watch One Piece first as much as I can, and then I will have a better grasp on making those characters in origami. And I think because the passion is there, it'll become a better design. Uh, that's kind of the same thing with like a uh, Jojo. So I've been watching Jojo. So I can make some Jojo characters. Um, but yeah. No Luffy yet. I think Luffy would be cool. Zoro would also be a really cool character to do with the three sword technique he has. Um, I don't, I don't know if that's the exact name of it, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, it'd be it'd be pretty cool, pretty cool to do. Nice, yeah. Shay, hello. Hey, <laughs> he's going to reuse Hu Tao for Miku. Oh, yeah, that's true, right? Like um. Yeah, it just needs to be Miku colored, right? And then uh, just hide the, like do something different. Do the rest of her, her hair and uh, the things. And then I can have Hatsune Miku, right? <laughs> That's so smart, okay? That's very smart, thank you. Thank you for the idea. Are you gonna reuse the design for, for Hatsune Miku? Finished Jojo, cool anime. Yeah, it's really fun to watch. For sure. I'm I'm only in part three though, so I've got a ways to go. But uh same thing with One Piece. I think that's gonna take me a while to to watch. We're gonna start with the top part here. So it's a good thing I didn't actually like collapse all the fingers yet. And actually what I mentioned when I was collapsing the middle flaps from the center earlier, uh, the same idea stands with the order of collapse. for um, this model. 
make it easier on yourself. So I'm not collapsing the fingers all at the same time. I'm doing just the, the stem or the first kind of base area of it first. Uh, and then we'll do the edge parts of the finger next. Okay. I was like, how does this arm? So now our arms are the right length. Again, we have this really like awkward flap right here that we could honestly make into the face. Uh, but we're just gonna like, I don't know what we can use this for. There's a lot of paper here. We're gonna, we don't wanna waste it. So I'm just gonna stick it in the back for now. <laughs> and we'll, we'll find something else to do with it later. Uh, maybe. But yeah, now our arms are looking long enough, so we're looking uh, the right length. And I'm wondering, actually, I think I should move this flap this way for the gloves. And the reason for that is because we want the seam to be right here because they're they're like gloves like right there and then what we do is we color change it Hmm. I want more color change here, but I think uh, this flaps is in like a weird spot. Like this is like too much color change and the other one is like not enough color change. I think what I do here is I move. I don't think I can even move this one either. Yeah, you probably don't really want to <laughs> color change it like this. I think I could just use the hinge, but uh, using the flap kind of works. All right, it's not super clean, but There's our little color change. All right, now let's do these fingers. The record of Ra Ragnarok. I want to watch that one too. I've seen like some clips from it and it made me want to watch it. Records of Ragnarok. Is that double tissue? This is double tissue, yes.
All right. So we've pre-creased our fingers now. Perfect. Now we can collapse them. They're a little bit weird to collapse sometimes, so I like to do it like this. Or I'm not doing the full thing yet. Just row by row. I have sub zero when we're done. Like the crease pattern? Yeah, I'll, I'll probably post the crease pattern. I don't think it'll be on my website, but I'll put it in Discord where it's available. Um, I'm going to make it more Mountain Valley though. I'm not going to post the skeleton of it. I think that'd be kind of mean just to <laughs> not hand out the Mountain Valley one. Um, and that should be good. Okay, so. We have our fingers here and now they're kind of strange because they're very much in the middle but all we really have to do is thin them down a bit um so what i like to do is these ones on the bottom here i just do uh sink folds uh the, to go really hardcore you could um or for like something like claws you could uh bird base in this little section and that thins them out a lot uh, but you don't really want claw-like structures as human fingers because it looks very clawed and kind of weird unless if your human character has claws or fingers um, but for like a regular people you don't want them too thin so just doing something like this is fine on this size of paper you might not even need to do this you could kind of just mush them out but uh not really recommended to do that this little sink should be more than plenty without being too much of a hassle. What's my Discord? Um, okay, so it is Origami Dan. And if you are over the age of 13, you can join. Or. Maybe it's for so it's easier so that if people don't know how to join the Discord, I will uh, I'll post it on the YouTube post section. So if you go, there's like the community post that you can view. I'll, I'll make a post there. That way it's just on this channel. That's probably a better better way to to share it. All right, and then now for the other fingers, we can do some simple sink folds this way as well. Not all these need to be sink folded. Some you can just squash fold. Um, that needs to be sink, I think. This needs to be synced. And then I think the rest are squash.
Is it somewhat difficult to fold on stream? Um, generally, yeah. I think uh, I fold way slower on stream because I'm trying to think and answer questions and stuff, but I'm like fairly used to it now. So, uh, <laughs> and also making tutorials is kind of similar where you're having to talk and be in frame and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I've done it for a while, so it's not, not too hard. Um, or not too hard for me anymore. Yeah, just because I've done it so much. But There's that too. You can also get all the crease patterns if you become a member. But no, so uh, you don't have to pay for this one. Um, so if you go to YouTube. Right. And you go to uh community so in this area i'll post a picture of the crease pattern so you just go to my my channel for community and it'll be here when it's done it, it's going to take some time like i kind of showed earlier it takes a while to not a while but it takes a little bit of time to draw it out so when i find time <laughs> which that is hard then i'll i'll finish drawing it and post it there uh, but you know there's not going to be a tutorial so this isn't like a, a full design or anything so you know i might not even finish this one myself um, but if you want to try it you can it might be a little bit of a challenge but you can definitely go for it okay so let's thin okay, some of these are going to have like a lot of problems thinning out actually uh, because of this thing here. Um, technically, I could unfold it and actually sink these down, but do I want to do that? Not really, so we're just going to we're just going to try shaping the fingers without <laughs> without that. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six flaps. Now one of them can be the palm and then five for fingers. I think generally this should be palm up. So let's see here. This is left arm, palm up, thumb is on the outside. This one can be like the thumb. Maybe this one, since it's like the most outside. No, I think it should be this one. That can be our palm. And I'm not like super shaping these out. I'm just kind of placing them where they should be. Me...
So like when you actually shape out these fingers, you'd probably want them to be a little cleaner. But just to save time, I'm gonna just like half shape these or not even half shape them, just like kind of pinch them into their form. Just so you can see that there's enough room. Right, so like we have our five fingers and then we have our ice ball. Which uh, I don't I don't know how to do an ice ball, but it can kind of be anything. It's probably be a little bit more crumpled. Can I just add more grid and give him an icy sword? True. You might not even need to add that much more grid. Um, you just need a larger paper. <laughs> or maybe larger paper for this, but you could probably do the sword without fingers. Can you do a sword without fingers? That'd be a very small. You could do like daggers, ice daggers with this same grid. Yeah, you could do like a slightly larger grid and have uh, swords. Okay, now for the color change torso, right? So this is my my bad idea. is you take one of these flaps like this one and you do something like this And you just wrap this underneath. Something like this. And so that's the color change underneath and then you have this stuff like on top. Or something. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it, like you could probably shape it to make it work. Um, like maybe this is too... harsh but you could do like <laughs> you 
You see what I mean, Mark? <laughs> it's not it's not the best solution, but it is a solution. Um, probably. Uh, we don't even need this anymore. Like, this could this could be part of the belt too. Just have this come in. That is a option. Again, not not a very good one. We also have like a bunch of leftover stuff here. So I don't know, you could probably put that somewhere else to make it work. But uh Yeah, not 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 the best solution for sure. <laughs> that is more cursed than a bear did the hospital. Uh, yes, it's it's a, uh, it's pretty cursed. Uh, but like, it could, you could, you could, you could get it to work. It, it would need, it would need some help. But uh, I think the real answer here is to not color change it and just have a cool vest underneath <laughs> or some kind of armor. Yeah, the, the thing is, though, because these legs are, like, we didn't get to shift them out at all. Uh, the whole body's got to be about, like, like this tall. <laughs> and the legs are probably still, like, way too thin. Uh, so that that is a problem with this design. I think I would need to uh, change it. So it doesn't quite look like this. Cause like after we do the uh shins. It's gonna be like even thinner. I'm just generally like oh, generally a little bit odd but uh maybe if you like are using thicker paper you can get it to look okay I mean, there, there's still room to like shape it <laughs> the to work but um yeah i don't know it's kind of a mess but you know test fold this is this is why we do test folds so i think with a smaller grid you could actually get a slightly better result for something like this and, and do things a little bit more normally where you don't have these uh ice balls um, I guess we could even color change this. Um, and just like make the character or, or do something different and give it swords. Kind of whatever you'd like. There you go. Now he's holding. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, but the torso definitely needs work. I think some of this is just kind of weird. And awkward and doesn't need to doesn't need to exactly be like this but um hopefully that makes sense for how you could design something like this i think i think this color change <laughs> makes it like way worse than it actually is if you don't color change it it's you can actually shape it into something that looks kind of cool maybe not exactly like uh, sub-zero but Color change from the other side. We'll do a full body twist.
Oh, look, that, that actually makes like way more sense. Look at that. Full body twist. Or lower torso to twist. There you go. You just gotta get creative. Find what works. Yeah, so that, like that's already better, right? Maybe we don't use that flat, but you could do literally anything with these ones. And then when you glue in place, it probably will look good. All right, so that is that design. I don't really want to shape it right now <laughs> uh, with glue and stuff. What I am interested in is the skier. So let's try that. And I think this was recommended by Dexter. Let me fact check myself for that. Yeah. T Dex. All right, so that's this. Yeah, I'll, I'll still make this mountain valley. Um, I might do something different with the head just because I really don't like these flaps sticking up. Um, I think they're, they're really awkward. So we'll, we'll figure something out there. Um, but let's, let's start new. So skier, right? And ideally I wanted this to be like 24 grid or less. I think would be cool. Uh, I, I don't think we can do it with 16 just because skis are kind of weird, but here's how I thought about skis. So skier. Like we can still start with our, our generic, uh, two, four, six, seven, seven unit legs, three unit torso. Four unit arms, maybe one unit hands, uh, but I think this is still fine because this is technically feet, right? Like six unit leg, one unit foot, three unit head, one unit flat for the face, maybe another one for the hair or hat or whatever. Now, skis are going to be on the feet and Ideally, I actually want it to be, I, I want there to be a, a foot a one unit flat for the, um, the foot. So it's, it's actually, there's, it's not like it, it's part of the leg. Um, and actually let me find a quick reference of a skier. Cause I don't know how tall skis are compared to the human body. Um, This is going to be a quick Google. How long are skis? So they should, it looks like they should be around neck level. Or they could be as tall as you for experts. Interesting. Let's make an expert skier. Why not? Right? So our, our person is how many units tall? Two, four, six, nine. And then technically it's going to be like around 10 
units tall. That's a safe number, 10 units tall. So let's put two, four, six on this side. Four on the other. So I think the front is gonna be longer than the back. It's generally how skis work, just like slightly. And if, if anyone in chat knows how to ski and I'm saying like the complete wrong stuff, you can totally let me know. <laughs> um, I think this is about right. Is that what skis are like? Oh, people are more. So let's put another unit here. Take one off here. Three, seven. Something like this, right? Um, yeah, let's just try to plot that out. And actually, this is very similar to um, like what you would do for a sword. Uh, but this time it's not going to be on the legs. So we can just start off with two, four, six, seven. Um, and then we went three and one. So we could do it this way. We might need larger than a 24 grid, actually. Do we? Maybe. Uh, I, I really don't want to. Um, actually, we're probably going not to. Let's try 32. Two, four. Maybe these skis are too long, too, but I don't know. Two, four, six. Seven. Okay, now the, the real question is, I'm not 100% certain these are in the right spots. So it's either this or it's... Uh, this. I like to, I personally snowboard. Um, I, so there's a mountain not too far for where I live. It's like an hour and a half. So I've been quite a few times when I was young, I did skis and then I learned how to skateboard. So then actually, no, I, I learned to snowboard first and then I learned to skateboard. And then now if I were to go back because I can skate, Kind of, um, I would snowboard for sure. How about you, Kay? Do you like to do you like skis more or snowboard or sleigh? Sleigh sounds pretty fun. Uh, I remember doing some small sleighs as a kid, but you can get pretty fast <laughs> actually on on those. Um, two, four, six, one, two, four. Oh, man. I was hoping that <laughs> this is the center. Boarding is the best feels extreme. True. Yeah. I, I like the control of just your feet together and like you're moving, right? Feels really good. I agree. All right, here's our skis. <laughs> I'm looking at this, this might not be good. So I think this is like, oh, this is also like 
way off. Oh, it's completely changed our uh, lit diagram. Let me let me redraw our tree. Um, so I did two, four, six, seven. Okay, so this doesn't look too bad, actually. So the thing is, because of the way we did this, we took up a lot of horizontal space. But we don't really need much other space is the thing. So I think what you could do here, if you wanted to really fill the space, is you could use like level shifters and make it a coat and a jacket. And that would consume some of this more, but like, do we really need to do that? We technically don't, but also like our arms are like all, all we really need for arms and a face is like this. So like maybe, maybe you want to, uh, <laughs> make a close back. I guess you could do that too. If you really wanted to, uh, I, I, there'd not be much purpose for this, but like you could, I guess in this case, we could add the ski poles. These are like way too long. <laughs> but but you could is the thing. You could. Should you? Probably probably not. Uh, also this is off. Um that's not good. Let's do Okay, I don't know. There's our skier. Um, okay, we do need like a torso though, because we actually don't have a torso. So if you wanted to add level shifters, you could do something like this.
This is like the very generic, like, shirt coat kind of thing. Um, it's still like way too tall. So right now our torso is two, four, five units tall. So we could add like, I don't know. What, what do you add to a, a jacket? Like <laughs> another pleat <laughs> I goes through the whole thing. This is really bad, by the way. Don't do, don't do this. This is, this is how I used to design. Um, do not recommend. So we're filling out the finger. This is the same finger structure. Uh, maybe. So normally when you have this, it, it kind of tells you like, you should probably use a smaller grid. But uh, cause and then we have weird stuff on, on here again. Which I have no idea what it's gonna be. Um, I guess you could make like a ski coat or a jacket. You could get creative with some of this stuff to fill it out, but. There's your skier. I'm so tired that instead of seeing Creech Spider, I'm seeing Nordic runes. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah, maybe like I'd have to take a look, try to find inspiration on maybe, maybe there's some cool looking ski jackets that have, I don't know, something that you could do. Cause like in here you can do like a lot of like fun stuff. Um, just using these pleats, but. Hard to say. Um, is this is this right? I feel like this is wrong somehow. Okay, these level shifters might not exactly be like this. Um, I think I think I think it's fine though. It would be like to close it off. It'd be like something like that. Right now it's just like sticking open. You can have multiple sets of these two just to like have them go all the way down and have like a really puffy coat. Then you could say you're technically using the space. All right, maybe we will fold this one next time because this should be easier to shape. I'll just need to give some thought as to like what actually goes here. Trying to look at skiers. Backpack. Goku drip suit. <laughs> Yeah, that's so true. All right, we just got to use these flaps for color change and color change to drip into it. Solid idea. All right, well. That was really fast. <laughs> I guess it works. All right. Well, that kind of actually brings us close to the end of the stream. I think it's been just a little around two hours. It's perfect. Hi, Danush. Hello. Hello. Um, uh, you're coming in right towards the end of the stream though, <laughs> but thanks. Thanks for stopping by. Um, basically what we did today is we designed a skier 
we folded a bit more of the of the uh, not Goku, of the um, Sub Zero. Uh, kind of found things that didn't work, things that did work. Uh, but ultimately, like this would be a ton of shaping um, to to try to finish up, uh, which it could be fine. Um, I think normally you you just don't want the legs to be like this. It just kind of looks a little awkward in the, in this state. Um, but there's at least a lot of flaps um, to to work with in order to try to shape it out into something. And also like also really weird flap right here. Uh, who knows what this is for? Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of what the stream was. Answered a lot of questions early on. Um, but I think that's going to wrap it up here. Uh, I'll continue to probably do some of these. So I, I think the <laughs> next time we stream, we'll, we'll actually fold the skier. So I'm, I'm kind of interested in making that. That seems like a, a better design um, or a more shapeable design uh, than the Sub-Zero. For, forget color changes. Color changes are tricky sometimes. Um, but before that, I think the next thing I'm going to complete is I'm actually really excited about this design. So I'm not exactly going to announce what it is yet, uh, but it's for the origami during death battle. Uh, it should be pretty interesting. I have some different color paper coming in for this and I'm going to make it like much bigger. And I think this will be really fun to shape, but may maybe I'll just show this model for now. So you can kind of see like. How, how the structure kind of goes, which which works out. So you can see we have the, uh, the the stick torso type thing. And then this character also, it's color change on the, uh, the lower waist part of the shirt. I don't know if this is what called like high rise pants or something like that. Uh, but then it color changes up on the over shirt. So, um, and then the character has shorts on which are actually just the same color. It's like shorts and then tights. So this is like the flap for the shorts, which, and then here's just the leg. And so it's obviously wide, right? So this is what, this is what we're missing on Sub-Zero. I think this Sub-Zero would be really shapeable if the legs were actually two units wide. But uh, I'm, I made poor decisions doing the color change for that uh, when I was thinking about it. When, Doing something like this would be a lot better. Uh, you could even like sack length and color. <laughs> That'd be really cursed to do it like that. But <laughs> um, yeah, this should be this should be an, a fun one to shape, actually. It's like a lot of potential. Uh, this this leg has a boot. This is actually a different ridge pleat right here. for a boot and then the hair is interesting so the hair is what I still have to figure out a little bit on this design like we kind of have some stuff but it's it's too messy for my liking so I've increased the length a little bit and then also you can see the arms are too long <laughs> on, on this model as well so I think what I decide to I think it's gonna be four units as well right now it's five units once before uh, four units and then we're gonna have a sword which I was just look we're looking at the, the color change here um, this obviously is not long enough to have this sword yet but we're bumping up the grid so that we can have a sword and then also there's a coat now this character is like half wearing the coat it's like the coat is over the shoulders so I have to figure that out but at least there's enough color change stuff for the coat, which is kind of fun. So it should be an interesting model. I uh, hope you guys are interested in that one. And then I'll leak the crease pattern, because that's always fun, right? Looks like this. So you can see, like, this would be where the 32 grid goes up to. So it's actually a 36. Um, and then this is the tree that I was trying to go for. And this is basically the grease pack. This isn't exactly what's going on with the coat. I might change that, uh, but the middle is basically the same. And then top part is for the hair. 
do a different kind of hand on this side. It's still too long. Shoot, this is five units long. Uh, but I think <laughs> what I'm going to do is just like pleat down to make the hand shorter and then use that as the, uh, instead of having like a flap, um, a flap for the sleeve, like it'll just be straight. And then I'll just, I'll just do this. <laughs> Like something like that, like half pleat. Definitely not the best <laughs> way to do that, but uh, it's okay, I think. Um, and then the other arm with the sword is actually the right length. It's four, four units long. It has a five unit long sword, which is a good length, I think. It's basically a five unit blade, two unit hilt. So it should look pretty big. Like this is three units. One, two, three. Yeah, so like a five unit blade will look a lot longer. Should be cool. Should be a really cool design. And I hope you all look forward to that one. But yeah, I think that wraps it up for this stream. Thank you everyone for watching. And if you were watching the VOD, you know, feel free to leave a comment down below. Uh, and if you want to recommend what we're designing next, you have some time because we're folding the skier maybe next week. Um, but if you want to suggest one, I'm only allowing the premium OBB members to, uh, recommend design subjects. So if you have interest of joining the origami by voice membership on YouTube, I think it's like $5 a month for the premium or something like that. And you get to join the discord. It's a lot of cool stuff goes down there. You get to see all the behind the scenes, all the crease patterns released and non-released as well as get to recommend what you want me to try to design um, uh, for the next couple streams. But yeah, thank you everyone for watching. The origami convention vlog is like half done in editing. I'm waiting on some stuff and just gotta crank out the editing, but lots to share. I'm really excited for everyone to see it. Uh, so far what I have down, I think everyone's gonna enjoy a lot. So look forward to that and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Uh, that's the wrong screen. Wh which one is it? This one? Ah, yes. Okay. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> I'll see you later.